Welcome to the second of two videos that will cover basic stoichiometric calculations as well as more advanced limiting reactant stoichiometric calculations. It is recommended that the student watch the first video that covers conversions between chemical quantities with the aid of the triangle. It will be assumed that the student is familiar with the triangle within this video. To introduce concepts within stoichiometric calculations, we will begin by asking some familiar questions regarding the synthesis of a bike, which can be represented by the equation two tires plus one frame produce a bicycle. The stoichiometry of this equation is highlighted. So if I have 20 tires and excess frames, how many bikes can I produce? The 20 tires will limit the production of bikes at 10, which is a calculation easily done in your head. However, it is best to envision the calculation in the following way. Two tires equal or make one bike allows the two conversion factors to be imagined from the equality which was discussed in detail in the previous video of this series. Starting with 20 tires and converting to bikes by multiplying with the correct conversion factor, one bike over two tires, tires cancel, which affords the answer 10 with the desired units, bikes. If I have infinite tires and 18 frames, how many bikes can I produce? This time the frames will limit the production of bikes to 18 which can be envisioned as follows. The equality one frame equals one bike affords two conversion factors. Starting with 18 frames and converting to bikes by multiplying with the correct conversion factor, one bike over one frame, frames cancel, which affords the answer 18 with the desired unit, bikes. Many of the same types of questions can also apply to a balanced chemical equation. For example, one could be asked, if 38.5 moles of methane are reacted with excess oxygen, how many moles of carbon dioxide will be produced? Or, if 82.1 grams of methane are reacted with excess oxygen, how many grams of water could be produced? Or, if 19.6 grams of methane are to be combusted, how many grams of oxygen are required? Or if 190.8 grams of carbon dioxide are produced, how many grams of methane were combusted? These questions are essentially the same as the questions regarding the bike synthesis. However, before we explain the problem-solving strategies for these types of questions, let's first make sure we thoroughly understand the implications within the balanced equation for the combustion of methane. We could say one mole of methane requires two moles of oxygen to produce one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Or 16.04 grams of methane require 64 grams of oxygen to produce 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide and 36.04 grams of water. Recall, one mole of methane is equal to 16.04 grams or simply one mole of X is equal to the molar mass in grams of X, which was covered in the previous video. Now let's begin the transition to solving stoichiometric calculations via mole to mole conversions. As we stated previously, one mole of methane requires two moles of oxygen, or two moles of methane requires four moles of oxygen. So let's work a problem that we can't easily do in our head. For example, if 16.8 mole of methane are reacted, how many moles of oxygen are required? The equivalent statement that allows conversion from moles methane to moles oxygen is derived from the stoichiometric coefficients. One mole methane requires two moles oxygen. As we demonstrated in the previous video, two conversion factors can be derived from any equivalent statement. Just remember that the numerator must equal what's in the denominator. Starting from the given value, we will multiply it by the conversion factor that allows moles methane to cancel and gives moles oxygen. In the next example, 5.9 moles of carbon dioxide were collected. How many moles of methane were combusted? The equivalent statement that allows conversion from moles carbon dioxide to moles methane is derived from the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation. 
one mole carbon dioxide will form when one mole methane is combusted. Thus, two conversion factors can be written from this equivalent statement. Starting from the given value, we will multiply it by the conversion factor that allows moles carbon dioxide to cancel and affords moles methane. Now let's take it a step further by reacting 50.1 grams of methane and asking how many grams of water are formed. In the previous examples, we learned we can go from moles of x to moles of y employing the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation. In this example, we will convert moles methane to moles water. So let's convert the given grams of methane to moles methane, then we can convert to moles water, then we can convert to grams water. Looking a little more closely, we see our plan is the same as connecting two triangles together. Now we have a road map, a start and stop point for grams of X to grams of Y for any stoichiometric exercise. Again, our plan is to convert grams methane to moles methane to moles water and then to grams water. To execute this plan, we start with the given quantity, then we let the units of our plan guide us in setting up the execution. Grams methane to moles methane, moles methane to moles water, moles water to grams water, which is our desired unit. Now that our units are set, we simply go back and place the numerical values in that allow the numerator to equal the denominator. 1 mole methane equals 16.04 grams methane. 2 moles of water will be formed when 1 mole of methane is combusted. 18.02 grams water equals 1 mole water. Doing the math and rounding to correct sig figs yields the final answer. Thus, the combustion of 50.1 grams of methane produce 113 grams of water. So let's do one more mass-to-mass -mass type of exercise. Given 90.4 grams of elemental copper formed, how many grams of gaseous ammonia were reacted? We can imagine that our start point is grams of Y and we need to go back to grams of X, or vice versa. Either way is equivalent, and to stay consistent, we will use the plan on the bottom. Now we have a road map a start and stop point, which affords our plan. Starting with grams copper, convert to moles copper, then to moles ammonia using the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation, and finally to grams ammonia. To execute this plan, we start with the given quantity. Then we let the units of our plan guide us in helping set up the execution. Grams copper, to moles copper, moles copper, to moles ammonia, moles ammonia, to grams ammonia, which is our desired unit. Now that our units are set, we simply go back and place the numerical values in that allow the numerator to equal the denominator. One mole copper equals 63.55 grams copper. Two moles of ammonia are required to form three moles of copper. 17.03 grams ammonia equals one mole of ammonia. Then doing the math and rounding to correct sig figs yields the final answer. Now let's take a look at a limiting reactant problem. In the synthesis of ammonia, what if two random quantities of reactants are given? and you are asked to calculate how many grams of product can form. One of these quantities will limit the production of ammonia and one quantity will be in excess. One way to solve this problem is to see how many grams of product can be produced from each quantity given. Then the smaller quantity formed is the maximum amount that can be synthesized. Within our plan, we will first convert grams of nitrogen to moles nitrogen, then convert to moles ammonia, 
via the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation, then convert moles ammonia to grams of ammonia. And starting with the given grams of hydrogen and converting to moles hydrogen, then converting to moles ammonia via the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation, and finally converting to grams of ammonia. To execute this plan, we start with the given quantity. Then we let the units of our plan guide us in setting up the execution. Grams nitrogen to moles nitrogen. Moles nitrogen to moles ammonia. Moles ammonia to grams ammonia, which is our desired unit. Now that our units are set, we simply go back and place the numerical values in that allow the numerator to equal the denominator. One mole nitrogen equals 28.02 grams nitrogen. One mole of nitrogen will afford two moles of ammonia. And one mole of ammonia equals 17.03 grams ammonia. Rounding to three sig figs yields the final answer. Now, let's begin with the other given gram quantity. Again, we let the units of our plan guide us in setting up the execution grams hydrogen to moles hydrogen, moles hydrogen to moles ammonia, moles ammonia to grams ammonia, which is our desired unit. Now that our units are set, we simply go back and place the numerical values in that allow the numerator to equal the denominator. One mole hydrogen equals 2.016 grams of hydrogen, three mole of hydrogen will afford two moles of ammonia. One mole of ammonia equals 17.03 grams ammonia. Rounding to three sig figs yields the final answer. The 33.5 grams of nitrogen limits the production of ammonia to only 40.7 grams. Thus nitrogen is the limiting reactant allowing only 40.7 grams of ammonia to form, and hydrogen is the reactant in excess. So a good question may arise. How many grams of hydrogen remain? Our plan to answer this question will be to convert the given grams of nitrogen to moles nitrogen, then to moles hydrogen, and then to grams hydrogen. This will represent how many grams of hydrogen were consumed in the reaction to form the 40.7 grams ammonia, which can then be subtracted from the initial amount of hydrogen to obtain grams hydrogen remaining. Following our plan and starting with the given amount of nitrogen, we convert to moles nitrogen, followed by conversion to moles hydrogen, and finally to grams hydrogen consumed. This represents the amount of hydrogen that reacted with the 33.5 grams of nitrogen, which was the limiting reactant. Subtracting this quantity from the initial amount of hydrogen given affords the amount of hydrogen remaining. In the next exercise, we are given quantities of reactants and product and ask for the percent yield. First, write down the balanced equation and quantities of reactants given as well as amount of methanol synthesized. We are asked to calculate the percent yield. This requires the actual amount produced, which was given in the word problem, and the theoretical amount if we assume 100% yield, which we need to calculate. Thus, this exercise is a limiting reactant exercise. In other words, we need to calculate the theoretical yield given the quantities of reactants. So let's start with the given quantity of hydrogen and convert grams hydrogen to moles hydrogen to moles methanol to grams methanol. To execute this plan, we convert the given quantity of hydrogen to moles hydrogen from the definition 2.016 grams of hydrogen equals one mole hydrogen, then convert moles hydrogen to moles methanol 
employing the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation, 2 moles hydrogen afford 1 mole methanol, then convert moles methanol to grams methanol from the definition 32.04 grams of methanol equals 1 mole methanol, which is our desired unit. Rounding to 4 sig figs affords the final amount of methanol that can be formed from 10.60 grams of hydrogen. So let's start with the given quantity of carbon monoxide and convert grams carbon monoxide to moles carbon monoxide to moles methanol to grams methanol. To execute this plan, we convert the given quantity of carbon monoxide to moles carbon monoxide from the definition 28.01 grams of carbon monoxide equals 1 mole carbon monoxide, then convert moles carbon monoxide to moles methanol, employing the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced equation, 1 mole carbon monoxide forms 1 mole methanol, then convert moles methanol to grams methanol from the definition 32.04 grams of methanol equals 1 mole methanol, which is our desired unit. Rounding to 3 sig figs affords the final amount of methanol that can be formed from 68.5 grams of carbon monoxide. The 68.5 grams of carbon monoxide limits the production of methanol, and therefore carbon monoxide is the limiting reactant, and hydrogen is the reactant in excess. Substituting the theoretical amount of methanol that can be formed into the percent calculation formula affords our final percent yield for this data, 45.5%.